Hello and welcome back to our channel Career Advice. So hope you are liking and finding it interesting all our videos. So in this class we will be talking about pricing management, price type, rate models and, and the billing class. So guys without wasting time let's directly jump to the class. So hold on. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel among your people, among your friends. Thank you. So great. So last time we discussed the billing. So just to recap that billing, what we discussed, we discussed about the contract billing and in contract billing, we understand it's an agreement between the business partner and with the utility company. The utility company may be of any division and that need to be linked to the business partner through a contract and that contract includes a billing rules and those rules need to be implemented through rate category. So rate category we apply at the installation label and below rate category, we have different different segments like uh, we need the outsort group, we need the billing class and we need the schema, okay? So when the billing class comes into picture, we understand it, need, it is linking all the master data, okay? So contract billing is like, it's kind of a, uh, uh, master data for the billing. And when we put them into a diagram format, you can see the installation is here, that installation linked to the rate category and rate category linked to the rate type and rate category, rate type actually determine the rates. Now those rates holds the variant programs uh, and the operands. So those called as uh, rate steps. So rate, multiple rates combined create a billing schema, okay? So billing schema holds rate one, rate two, n number of rates, and each of the rate holds the rate steps. Each rate step, again, linked to a variant program and operands. Finally, the operand holds the operand values, and that's how we are implementing the logic. So we discuss about the billing class rate type price we didn't discuss about price today we are going to create the price uh, we created the operands we used the variant program uh, in our last session uh, we created rate schema and rate category we also dis discussed today about the facts okay so uh, let's go to the uh, uh, to the server to understand all those details It will take some time to connect and then we'll proceed with that. Uh, okay. So. So let's go to the um, ES. ES32, open a uh, any of the installation. And you can see at the installation level, we have rate category. We already discussed under rate category, we have outsourced group, billing class, and billing schema. Inside this schema, we have uh, rate steps. And in rate steps, we have rate. And inside the rate, we have this is the rate header and inside rate we have rate steps in rate steps you can see we have variant so variant has its own definition what are what are 
the input operands, it should be quant and q price and the output should be amount. And based on that definition, we introduce two operands and one output operand. And that's how the logic is implemented here. So that was discussed last time. So today we are going to uh, discuss about how to create the prices, okay? So now to create a price, let first understand how many types of prices we have, and then we'll come to do the practical here, okay? So we understand the billing class. Billing class is linked to almost all part of the master data. It, it's linked to the uh, installation, rate category, rate type, also price, discount, rate, schema, and MRU portion. Everything is integrated through uh, billing class. Okay. Now, when we link all those master data, it's linked through the billing class. And when we do the determination, which will be created, uh, uh, means determination happen with the rate type and the rate category. So that also, this rate category also linked to all these rate uh, billing master data through billing class. Okay, so that's how the billing class is important. It combine all the rate data and the whole rate data, uh, rate design is depend on that. Now, uh, today we are also see how to create the rate type and billing class. Okay, rate type basically we it's a metering data. Mostly the rate type is linked to the register devices or if there are any flat rates, we define user defined rate types and that link to the uh, rate category to determine the rate, okay? Okay, so example of rate type like off peak and on, on peak rate types, okay? So it linked to the register device or facts or sometime it's linked to the interval meters as well. So uh, you can understand this register, device, facts, interval meter, period and billing and waste billing, these all are types of rates. So if we go to the header of the rate, you, you can see, let me show you, you can see there are multiple uh, options for a rate. If you have any queries in between, you can ask. So at the schema step, we have, okay. You can see we have options here, register permissible, interval meter, device permissible, fact permissible, waste billing permissible, period and billing permissible. So these are type of rates. So what we discuss right now. So you can see when we link the rate type, it need to be linked to the rate by which we can do the rate determination. Now the rate determination need a rate type which should be either register. Register means it's a register permissible rate. So that's how it will be linked to the uh, rate and it will determine that rate. Determines means it will activate that rate. Okay, for that particular rate category, which link the schema and that schema holds the rate. Similarly, device permissible, we need to define the rate type as device permissible or fact permissible. So based on the types of uh, rates, we need to define the rate types, okay? And then you can see how they are integrated. When we do a installation and we install a device, at the device level, we can apply the rate type or else at the register level also, we can define the rate types or if it is a, uh, what we call user defined rate, we can uh, define that at the installation fact level. Sometime we also define the rate type at the rate category level at their uh, fact level, okay? So all these sections are useful to link the rates to the rate type to determine the rate steps, or you can say determination of the rate. So till that we already discussed in our last class. Today, we are going to discuss about the prices, uh, how to create the prices, what are the prices. So all those details we are going to discuss.
Now, what is a price? The price are allocated to the operand in the rate fact uh, for the rate. Now, it's a very uh, complex definition, but to understand that we can understand at the rate label, we define the operand that is called a price operand. Now that price operand needs some value. That value we need to pass to that price operand through a price key and that price key we need to define with a value. That value means what is the exact value of that particular entity or object, okay? So here you can see uh, we have central price management system where we define a price key and prices, the value, actual value, right? So mostly by EA89, we create the prices. And there, when we try to create the prices, it will first ask the price category, okay? Now, to define the price category, we have four options, starting with quantity-based price, then flat rate, clearing price, and time-based price. Now here, what the quantity-based price means, it's mostly related to the consumption. So the number of uh, quantity consumed by a customer multiplied to a price. Last time when we created the schema, we defined uh, quantity 01, which is simple multiplication of a quantity, means consumption with a price, which is giving us the amount. So in that case, the quantity is the consumption and we need a Q price to multiply with that quantity which will give us the amount. So in that case, we need to define the quantity based price, which is here defined. Next is flat rate, which is used for the fixed amount per unit time. Okay, so that we call a flat rate price. Like for a month, the amount should be like 30 rupees. So that need to be applied. So it would always 30 for every month. So it is called a flat rate, okay. Now it is not changing with time or consumption, it's fixed with the duration. Similarly, clearing price. Like uh, sometimes it's come with the rental billing kind of stuff. So where we measure the devices over a certain period of time, let it be, let it be for uh, duration of 30 days, we allocate 30 rupees. Now, if it is 35 days, the rent will increase to 35 rupees. So with the time base, the, uh, uh, the, with the certain period and time, the prices need to be calculated for the devices or the equipments. So those are called the clearing prices. And as name define the time-based price. Um, so it is also used for the demand connections. Time-based price is mostly again used for the equipment, for the rental perspective, where let it be for a particular connection, uh, we are allocating uh, a device which need to be calculated based on how many days it is linked to that site. Okay, so that's how we are using the time-based price. Now, once we define the price category, we move to the next step to define the price type. The price type again defined as three types, starting with standard price, block price, and scale price. The standard price is very simple. It's based on the quantity and it will multiply the value and give us some like amount. But whereas the block price is having multiple prices. Uh, so mostly you can understand in Odisha, there are prices used in between zero to 100. 100, 1 to 200, different, different prices. Like for, for the 0 to 100 unit of consumption, the price is 3.50. For 100, 1 to 200, it may be 4 rupees. For 200, 1 to 300, it may be 5 rupees. And from 300, 1 onwards, it may be 6 rupees 50. So like that, this is one of the example of the block price. That means we are creating a blocks for the consumption and for each block, there are different, different prices. So like somebody is consumed 350 units of uh, energy that in that case, he has to pay first 100 uh, units consumption, which is considered as three rupees. 
So it will be multiply and it will give you uh, 300, right? Plus the next 100 units of 350. So it will multiply again 100 with 350. So 300 plus 350, it will give 650. And then next 100, which is considered as four rupees. So in that case, 100 multiply four, it will give you 400. That means 300 plus 350 plus 400. And the rest amount of uh, 50 units be multiplied with the final uh, five rupees. So let it be 50 into five, 250 rupees. So that means the 350 getting calculated into uh, into four blocks. First block of 300 rupees, second block of 350 rupees, third block of uh, uh, 400 rupees, and fifth block, which is not 100 units, which is a 50 units, calculating 250. And the total will give you the total consumption amount. So that is called block price. Whereas scale price is a bit different. The scale price, like, Based on the quantity, if you buy more, the price may be less or high. Example, if you buy two kg of potato, uh, the price may be 10 rupees for each kg. But if you go for 20 kg of potato, the price may be eight rupees for one kg. So based on your scale of uh, uh, quantity, the price may be differ. So that's how it is illustrated in this diagram. You can see the block price and the scale price is defined. The block price has different, different quantities. And for each quantity, you have different, different prices. Like Q1 having something like in between P5, Q2, P4, like that. So different, different prices for each of the quantity, right? So that is called block price. Whereas scale price, when the quantity going uh, go, you can see, uh, horizontally it is increasing, that means your price will differ. With the increase of quantity, the prices are differ. Okay, so that's how it is go on. And we are doing the billing based on this type of prices. Any questions on this block price or scale price or standard price? No, sir. Okay. Now, when we create a price, we have to give multiple entries, which are called header data for the price keys, like the transaction currency. The currency is the most important stuff uh, when it's come to the price calculation. In our case, we are going to give the INR. So the FICO team will define the transaction currency and we need to def use that when we create the prices. Similarly, the billing class, as I mentioned multiple times, the billing class is holding all the master data related to the billing. So that's how the billing class we need to define when we are creating the price key. Division, definitely division need to be there because it linked to your installation and type of utility. And then rounding parameters, whether if there will be any calculation, what will the behave of the price? Will it increase, uh, it will, rounding up, rounding down, or not rounding. So those parameters we need to define. Then price adjustment clause, external price, average price, and gross price, which we are defining during our uh, price key creation. So mostly it's based on the requirement of the business. We are defining the uh, price types, whether it is external, average, or gross price. Finally, uh, from out of those external uh, gross price and adjustment price. So price adjustment clause is a bit different. So what it behaves like, so let it be, we already apply a particular price, okay? And after some time, we understand the price, which one applied was practically need to be changed, okay? It means, let it be the base price is two, okay? And we have two options. Either we need to add or we need to multiply, okay? So we need to choose. If we add, okay, that means two plus 1.30, it will give, give us 3.50. So your final price is 3.50. If we multiply, so two, multiplied 1.50, it will give us three, okay? Are you getting? 
So we have two options, addition and multiplication to do the adjustment for the pricing based on the base price. Either we multiply or we'll add. Most of the time we consider which are giving us the maximum output. Again, based on the business requirement, business decision, we'll take whether we'll go to add or multiply the pricing. So in that case, we do the adjustment. Now, if we go, come to the structure of the billing rules where we multiply the quantity with price, which is giving a amount, okay? In the last quantity price, will, which will give a amount. So that need to be posted. So when some, some line item need to be posted, we need to define that line items, okay? Now, by using that billing line item, what we do, when we do the bill print, we call that line item to be printed on the bill or on the invoice. Okay, any questions? No, sir. We already discussed about the operand in our last class where we created three operand. One operand is quantity, one is price, which will give us the amount. We all also discuss the types of operands. So there are 20 types of operands are there. And based on the uses, there are four type of operands, normal, register, complete, and RTP operands. Then we define the uh, operands uh, based on the different criteria, okay? So today we are going to define the prices, all right? So let's do the practical. To create a price, our first requirement is to uh, go to the price creation T code. So that is EA89. So your option is create price. Now you need to give a price name here. So I'm just here, the pricing name is in numeric form. So I'm giving a name as 23567830101, or let's give a simple name of 24 all zeros. Okay, so this is the price. I'll give a five at the end, otherwise it will create a difficulty. Okay, now, as we discuss, after giving the price key name, we need to define the category. So in our case, we need to define the price category as quantity price, so quantity. Then no need to define any price level because it is mostly used for your uh, rental price. Uh, then we have uh, transaction currency, which is INR in our case. Okay, so define that. Then price type. So in our case, it would be a standard price. So once you've done that, press enter. Okay, so this number range, it is not allowing us. So let's keep something different. Okay, let me check once. Okay, so now I just created one price key, which is 23567830101. And I need to define here the description of the price. Let it be price for testing. Okay, now you can see here, we need to pass the billing class here, 0001 and the division EL. Okay, unique, so it's a consumption one. So we are giving the KWH as the unit. You can see here kilowatt hour. Price adjustment clause, as I, we discussed, we have two options, whether you need to go to addition or 
multiplication. Currently, we are just going with the standard process, right? Now, next each, whether your price is whole number, external price, all those gross price, we need not to go with that because we are not defining any uh, external price link or any gross price link so because we are defining here. So we are not changing anything here. Franchise free, no franchise free because it's it's going to multiply the consumption. So and it's not through the franchisee. So we are not applying the franchisee fee category here. Time category, yes, we need to define the time category. It should be in days. Each day of consumption, we need to, cal to calculate. It would be zero zero starting from the base. You have other options as well, like you can go with the month, and you can start the calculation from the zero one month. Okay. Then average price, no average price calculation, rounding, do not round as you know all, what is round up, round down. Okay, so we are not applying any rounding. Then we'll go to the header data two. Here, we are not allocating to a particular installation or origin or authorization group. So we are not filling anything. We're just going to the history table here uh, into history tab. Here we need to define the validation starting date. In our case, we are just giving the 1st of October 2022 and the validation end date, the default date as 31-12-9999. The quantity base would be one because for each consumption, we are applying the price and the price amount here you need to define. Let me apply two two rupees for each consumption. So you can see we have the price valid from 1st of October and valid end of 31st of October and the quantity base is one and the price amount is two. Okay. Any questions till now? No, sir. no. Okay, let's go save this. You can get a uh, TR transport request just execute to save that it will get saved all right clear about how to create the prices okay yes. when you get your time just try to create the prices with the different different categories and different different price types okay now we need to apply this price okay at the fact level so let's open one installation So we are using 270 here. Uh, we need to apply the price. So let's see, check the device. At the device level, you can see we are applied the uh, rate type and the fact group as well. So, so let's go to change mode to apply the price. Uh, I'm applying it for the sake of applying the price uh, at the fact level, but you can apply the price at the device level as well. Okay, so what is the price operand for us? So our price operand name is ENHT hyphen price. We just choose that price execute that, you can see the valid from date is coming as the default date of the installation. And I'm passing the valid to date as 31.12.9999. Here we need to pass the price, uh, which price we created. Okay. So we created the price 23567830.1. Just need to copy that price. Okay. So you can see that price is now reflecting here at the fact level, which is linked to the operand of the price.
which is used at the rate step and I'm just transforming this. So you can see the price here is updated. If I'll go back and save this, your price is updated at your installation. Okay, let's go to the display mode. Check the price at the fact level. You can see the facts. So this is called the installation fact. Okay. Now, if I need to create another price and need to update the price at another fact level, which is at the rate category level, can I do? Yes, I can. So let's create another price, which would be of number two with the same stuff. Okay. So it would be the testing price two. And with all the details, same details, our division is EL uh, with the same days and zero zero as the initial period. And with the history table, we can well started the validation from the 1st of October end validation date would be 31st of December 9999. Create Quantity base would be one amount. I'm passing here three and copy. So this is created. So save this. Now my target is to apply this price at the rate. Okay, so now the second price is created uh, and we are going to maintain this price at the rate category level. Okay, so to maintain that we need to first go to the rate category. Okay, so for rate category, we need to go to EA32. Okay, we need to go to the change mode. Our rate category each <coughs> rate cat, so you can use the rate cat. Okay, enter. Sorry, it's a rate. I need to go to the rate categories. Sorry. Okay, let's go through the navigation path. So when you go to the rate category, it is EA54. Okay, so you can go either via uh, the navigation path or via EA54. So it is change rate category. Now I need to pass here the rate category. So in rate category also we have a fact. Here we can also maintain the price. You can see the price is maintained already here. Uh, let me up, uh, up. Uh, 
just I need to double click there. So you can see here a price one is maintained, which value is one. Okay, so it is the rate category at the fact label, whereas the installation label we are maintaining the facts, which is called uh, price at the fact uh, installation fact level. Right. Similarly, we have another fact at the rate label. Okay. To go to the rate, we have to EA32 use the T code as EA32. Okay. So now we need to check which one is the rate uh, category, uh, rate in our schema. So the rate is rate demo. Okay, so here you can pass the rate demo here. So here also at the header level of the rate, you can find a fact, click on the fact and you can apply the prices here. So here also the price is applied as one. Okay. So now how many facts you have? You have three fact. One fact is at the rate level. One fact is at your rate category level. One fact is at your installation level. So three facts and you can apply three different prices. Now the question arises, which fact should be picked during the billing? Okay. So depending on the condition, the priority of the facts are like the most priority fact is your installation fact. Okay. Then less than that is rate category and then rate. So when we are applying the facts, it will definitely check first the fact at the installation that will be the highest priority and that will be picked and overwritten everything. If it don't have any facts at the installation level, it will check at the rate category level. If you'll find something at the rate category level, that is the highest priority. And if there are no facts at the installation level at the rate category level, it will go to the rate level. And if there is any fact, it will pick the value from there. Okay, so that's how the facts maintained. We need to search the operand, we need to apply the values and we need to update the fact by saving that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, from the beginning, uh, I mentioned two, three things which we we need to create today. So one of them is creating the billing class. Other one is to creating the uh, rate type. Okay. So let's go to the SPRO to create the billing class. We need to go to SPRO. SPRO is your uh, SAP configuration mode where you can find all the path and to do the configuration. But the front, uh, which is easy navigation path, that is for the users. So like consultant always do the configuration through SPRO. Okay. Whereas the users mostly use the EG access. So this is your EG access screen. And EG access has a limitations that like the security team, they put some limitation here. So everybody will not get the access of all the processes. Whatever the related to that project, only those T codes or those uh, objects will be reflect here. Okay. So let's go to the SPRO to create the billing class. Now, again, we need to go to the same uh, process. We need to go to the utility industry. Okay, then contract billing, then billing master data. Okay, rate structure. 
Okay. So here we need to create the billing class. So are you able to see this define billing class? Yeah. So here you need to execute and you need to pass a name for the billing class. Let it be the billing class name would be anything. Pritam and Abhishek. Pritam Abhishek class already the, the class is already there. Pritam Abhishek CL. Okay. Billing class for Pritam and Abhishek. Okay, then save it. Okay, your billing class is done. It is get saved. Similarly, we need to create the rate type. Okay, so here define rate type, just execute that. New entry. You need to define a rate type here. So let Pritam Abhishek rate type. Okay. So I define as Pritam Abhishek RTY. Now, once we define the rate type, we need to define that. So this is the description. Now we need to pass the division there. In our case, it is EL as the division. Then billing class, billing class would be uh, whatever the billing class you created, you need to pass that or here default billing class is 0001. I'm just used that. As I mentioned, we have six type of rates and each type of rates need to be linked to a rate type to determine that rate or to activate that rate through the rate determination. In our case, our rate is a register, uh, register permissible rate. So we need to tick mark this as a register permissible. If you create anything which is device permissible, you can tick here, device permissible, fact permissible below F, then period and billing PE, okay. Similarly, if you are any interval meters, you can click here, interval meters rate type, uh, waste billing type for WB, and finally CA, okay, which is like, don't use this rate type. This is gone or ignore the rate type, okay? So these are the conditions here, okay? Now save this. So your transaction is there, decode. Okay, so your TR is saved now and your rate type is created. Okay, so you created the price, you created the billing class, you created the rate type. Okay, all the configuration done. Okay, now next time we need to do the, uh, okay, something more which is related to the finance and uh, number ranges related to the billing and the billing processes as well, okay? So, so the next target is to go to the billing processes and to know how to create the billing, how to do the invoicing, how to reverse the invoices, how to reverse the billing, what is the outshot group, what is the simulation processes? All the stuff we'll discuss, okay?
Thank you.